Hi, it's uh, Matthew Wagner here from PanicAttackRecovery.com. I want to discuss someone famous who has suffered from anxiety, panic attacks, and agoraphobia. I'm talking about Kim Basinger. Some people say, who cares? But my reason for discussing this is that quite a while ago I saw a documentary on anxiety, panic attacks, and agoraphobia, and this documentary followed Kim Basinger around. She appeared to be quite open and honest about her struggles. It was really interesting. I appreciated that. What was really interesting is, is the points, I think, that can be taken from this documentary. Now, the first point is that anyone can struggle with the issues of anxiety, panic attacks, and agoraphobia. Celebrities, wealthy and successful people, professionals from all sorts of backgrounds. You may be thinking, okay, anxiety, panic attacks means I can't function. No, not at all. Look at all these people that have these things and, and continue to move forward. But it, additionally, I, I really think you can you can get much better if you work through the activities and suggestions in my newsletter. And you're proactive and you work with your therapist, um, you work with other professionals. See, I, I make suggestions in my newsletter, but I talk about fundamentals and principles, such as consistency and follow through with your actions and always being proactive, being resilient incorporating these things into your approaches. So what I'm saying is, you know, there are people that suffer with these things and they live relatively normal lives, but I'm saying you can, I think you can get better. A second point, though, from this documentary is, you know, look at what Kim Paisinger has accomplished despite her struggles. Often people with, who struggle with anxiety think that life can only be so good. And this, this is what I was really getting at. In other words, there's only so much that they can accomplish. This limited type of thinking, of course, makes anyone more anxious. You recall me, um, no doubt, if you've listened to any of my podcasts or installments, I've mentioned the vicious circle of anxiety. You know, you get into that type of thinking, and it's very, very limiting on anyone. You probably recall the famous movie As Good As It Gets with Jack Nicholson and Helen Hunt. The character that Nicholson played didn't suffer from panic attacks. In fact, Nicholson portrayed someone who had obsessive compulsive disorder. However, my point here is that you'll likely recall a scene from the movie. This is where Nicholson comes out of his therapist's office and says out loud to everyone in the waiting room, what if this is as good as it gets? Now this statement illustrates a form of limited thinking which I was mentioning. Limited thinking can apply whether you're thinking about how you're likely to feel or whether you're talking about accomplishments. What I'm really saying here is that the fact that you must recognize is that this type of limiting keeps you stuck. Throughout my newsletter, I've worked on various anxiety-producing thoughts utilizing cognitive behavioral therapy. The process is locating the cognitive distortions and then substituting healthier thoughts and realistic thoughts in their place. Cognitive behavioral therapy is a great way, when done continuously, to break away from limited type of thinking. It's not something you do once or just several times, CBT that is, cognitive behavioral therapy but rather something you do continuously. It's like exercise. If you exercise, you maintain you know, perhaps a healthy weight. You stop exercising and, and the benefits go away. That's my point. Same though with CBT. Although what you'll find is over time, you can make real change with CBT, long-lasting change. One of the things that comes from CBT is that it helps you restructure your thinking in a realistic way. And it's not a matter of tricking yourself into feeling better. It's not some new age idea where you just tell yourself everything is good, and it is. CBT is structured, organized, and logical. In many ways, it seems like we're unwinding all the circular thoughts that caused our anxiety and panic attack. And that's what I was referring to when I said over time, you can really make large changes because you really start to unwind thought patterns the attitudes, perspectives that you've had. But getting back to Kim Basinger, I want to make another useful point. And that is, the key to really getting better is similar to what Kim, Kim Basinger does when she produces great work or gets in front of a large audience. And this is any actor. Kim and other actors fully immerse themselves into the present situation. This immersion prevents the actors from being distracted by their anxiety. Here is what I consider the biggest point to take away from all of this. The immersion at first does not feel natural. You will resist going out of your comfort zone. So in other words, let's say that you're interacting with a bunch of people at a social gathering, party, whatever, but your anxiety is sort of nagging at you. But instead, if you really listen to what people are saying and talk to them and, and you're relaxed and you, you won't even pay attention to your anxiety. That's the key here. The key is really that your attention has to go on one thing or the other. It goes in your anxiety or it goes in the conversation. You ever notice if you're distracted when, when someone is talking to you that you haven't really heard a word they said or haven't heard enough to, to keep up with the conversation. But if, if you really listen and immerse yourselves, you've heard the conversation, but also you haven't been anxious because you've been focused on what the person is saying.
And that's what the actors are doing. They're focusing on their lines and they get in front of a crowd. They're not focused on their anxiety. The ironic thing here is, as I said, you're, you're probably going out of your comfort zone because your comfort zone is to sort of obsess about your own thoughts, you know, and not really focus on others when you're at a gathering. And that's really why you're so anxious, as I've said. The irony, though, is that your perceived comfort zone is in itself a form of uh, limited thinking pattern, which keeps you stuck. So now you know the problem, but what do you do? Well, although at first you will feel much resistance to reframing your thinking with CBT, this reframing and immersion in a place outside of your comfort zone is the way out. If you can take some time to really ponder the points that I've suggested, if you've been listening to my podcast, you can listen to more of them. Get my newsletter, you go back and you reread them. Just like anything, you don't necessarily get all the benefits right away. It's always good to go back and reread something. But I would suggest that you really listen to the podcast or go back to the newsletter or look at my website. Really write down the key points from your perspective. For more information on panic attack recovery, recovery from agoraphobia and anxiety, please visit my website at panicattackrecovery.com and sign up for my free and continuous newsletter. Thank you. Material in this newsletter is provided for educational and informational purposes only and is not intended to be a substitute for a psychologist, psychiatrist, or other health care provider's consultation. Please consult a psychologist, psychiatrist, or appropriate health care provider about the applicability of any opinions or recommendations with respect to your own panic attacks, anxiety, and agoraphobia, or any other symptom or condition. I hope that you enjoyed the video and found it very helpful and informative. And I would encourage you to uh, visit my website at www.panicattackrecovery.com. Thank you.